In this uh, video, we're going to talk about bias in survey questions. A survey, of course, is when you ask every single member of a sample set, so like your entire school, for instance, a set of questions. The problem is the questions that you ask them, specifically the way you ask them in the wording, could affect how they answer. Uh, so what you're trying to do is not introduce bias into the equation. Bias is when you make uh, the decision go one way or the other, even if it's unintentional. It's kind of like you're, you're pushing the agenda whether you mean to or not. Uh, the first thing that you don't want to do is combine two or more issues. So for instance, if I was doing a little informal, informal survey, or I was doing a formal survey, uh, and I said, should school days be shorter and start earlier. Well, in some ways, people, I could get some support for this, because a lot of people want school days to be shorter, um, students mostly, and teachers, uh, people who actually have to do it, uh, wanted the days to be shorter. Uh, but the start earlier, earlier part doesn't really sell. Where I go to school, or where I work right now, school starts at 7.30 in the morning. So let's just say, for instance, I saw this question, and I wasn't really sure what it meant. All of a sudden, that kind of ambiguity makes the bias start to be uh, eke into the equation, let's just say. Um, maybe that means that school days will start at 6.30 in the morning, and they'll be 15 minutes shorter. So instead of getting out at 2.30 like the school does now, it gets out at 1.15, because we but we go an hour earlier, which would normally, the normal length of the school day would make us leave at 1.30, but we get out at 1.15, so 15 minutes less of school, and only have to get here an hour earlier. That would be perfect for somebody who really likes afternoon, uh, but not anybody else. So once I entered two components to, into the equation, it added bias to it, so it's not a good survey question. Um, from there, we may deal with uh, using double negatives. I, you know, don't you or do you not disagree that kind of thing anytime you use double negatives you're starting to add sort of murkiness into the question process and people may choose the wrong thing and something that they don't mean um, overlapping answer choices overlapping answer choices are much like combining two or more issues in your question if you give them choices and all of a sudden uh, two things are involved in your answer and it's sort of like well I'm answering this but not this and that whole thing that's when the overlapping answer choices become a problem you want to keep answer choices as separate as you possibly can I mean they can have certain components that are the same but you don't want to have them uh, seem like well like the earlier start time question before. I didn't want one of the choices to be like start earlier and uh, be 15 minutes shorter and then you have uh, start earlier and be shorter it's sort of confusing about what does that mean you know they're almost the same thing so you want to make sure that they're as separate as possible using loaded words is a big deal it's really how a lot of uh, people who do surveys gain the information that they want to get even before they start things like um, for instance in the abortion debate if you use pro-choice or you use pro-life those are both positive uh, words depending on what side of the argument that you're on. If you uh, use the word poison as opposed to pesticide, that should be a problem. Anytime you start using adjectives, uh, generally it becomes a problem. If you call uh, a book, bore, would you rather re watch an exciting movie or read a boring book? Once you add those loaded words into the equation, you're pushing the mindset uh, already. So you don't want to do that. And then asking a leading question. You don't want to ask questions where you say sort of like, don't you agree with this? Or wouldn't you say that this is true? Or blah, blah, blah. Uh, once you start uh, already assuming that they agree with you, then the questions become you know, kind of a big problem. The thing you don't want to do is have, uh, don't you agree that teachers are underpaid? Or don't you agree that teachers get paid too much? Whatever it happens to be. Once you start pushing that agenda into the equation, it becomes a problem. So long story short, in your question, you should only focus on one thing at a time. Your answer should be very specifically answering one thing at a time. You don't want to use double negatives. And uh, you never use loaded words. So don't use anything that uh, sort of uh, show a bias in the question. Don't like uh, presuppose things. 
and which would be the last one, sorry, uh, ask a l leading questions. You don't want to ask questions that uh, already sort of assume they agree with whatever you're saying and then they have to disagree because it sort of changes the mode. They're not giving a choice anymore. They're doing a yes, no based on your assumption that they believe something to be true. So that's it in order to avoid bias in survey questions. Avoid those five things and then you should be uh, making a reasonable survey question.